bringing awareness to the knees, the release of the knees. We draw our awareness up into the thighs. Relaxing the large muscles of the legs. Relaxing the IT bands on the sides, the psoas deep in the body, in the pelvis, the hamstrings. As we relax, circulation improves. Good stuff is brought in and yucky stuff carried out. We allow the body to do that work. Feeling our sit bones in the chair or on the couch or on the floor. Just noticing if we're listing to one side, we tend to. Just noticing our weight, our presence. We relax the belly, softening the belly. Relaxing and releasing in the lower back. Expanding through the hips. Noticing just the breathing change when we start to soften everything in the torso. Relaxing the rib cage and the intercostal muscles between the ribs. Relaxing the mid back, allowing the bellows to expand when the air comes in. Bathing the kishkas, all of our organs in healthy oxygenated blood. Because we're relaxed. Three quarters of our immune system is in the guts. So we actually help ourselves heal as we relax. Relax the upper back and shoulders. Imagining opening at the chest. Dropping into the heart space. Noticing any feelings that are there. Allowing feeling to be. Blessing our capacity to feel. Acknowledging the courage that each of us shows in feeling what we feel. Relaxing the neck and throat. We imagine the neck lengthening. Relaxing all those muscles that we often tense up during the day around the neck and upper back. We relax the jaw and the face. We 
Letting the eyes be soft in the head. Releasing our attachment to sound, allowing it just to be. Relaxing the scalp. And our mystical tradition invites us to imagine opening at the crown of the head, further setting our intention of expanding the mind, letting the mind relax. And spread out, if you will. So rooted and grounded through the feet, our awareness expands to the roof over our head, the sky beyond that, billions of galaxies beyond that. How improbable that we're here. What a miracle is this life we're given. So we'll sit for a few moments, grounded, open, present. No, no, no. We are coming through this month of Elul. We're coming to the end of summer. We are approaching Slichot next week. In preparation for Rosh Hashanah. We are coming to the biggest days of our year. The process begins now of moving out of sleepwalking turning inward beginning 
the process of a cheshbon hanefesh, an accounting of the soul. This is a loving process, a hard process that takes courage, strength, patience, and love to begin to face the big accounting of this year. It's been a year. It has been a year. For me right now, the work is even just wading through how much there is from the last five months just to even touch what's underneath it. told in our Torah portion that Moshe talks to the people and says, You've seen all that the mystery, capital M, did before your very eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, to all his servants, and to the land, the great trials which your very eyes beheld those great signs and wonders. Yet until this day, the one has not given you a heart to know, eyes to see, and ears to hear. Rabbi Yael Shai writes, those miracles, the deliverance, the connection, the potential and the divine was always right in front of us. Before your very eyes, the text says, and yet we could not see it, could not hear it, and could not know it. What were we doing that we missed those signs and wonders? What on earth was more important than showing up for? What have we been so busy with that we haven't shown up to the wonders, the miracles, the deliverance? begin this process of tshuva now in Elul. Committing to sitting together at least once a week to begin showing up. To begin waking up. Rabbi Alan Liu, who 
studies meditation. Cites the work of Herbert Benson, who identified the fact that many of the physiological and brain-based changes people experience after meditation are triggered exactly at the moment when we realize that our attention has drifted and we resolve gently to bring it back. The moment in meditation we think we have failed is actually the first part of waking up. Take a few moments to sit. This is tshuva, says Rabbi Sheila Peltz Weinberg. This is the work of shuv that we talked about this morning in our parsha, returning. We return only when the mind wanders can we exercise tshuva, returning the attention to the breath. So with no judgment, with lots of compassion and love and patience. We take a few moments to let the mind rest, the body rest. And every time our mind starts to work and wander, we do a loving act of shuv, of returning the attention to the breath. Hashivat Aveda, the returning of what's been lost. Teshuva is about our return because we have been lost. It is a constant practice. Acknowledging abundance as blessing is also in our Parsha. Gratitude, acknowledgement of how much comes from beyond us. And Dani's beautiful teaching of Hashivat Aveda, returning what is lost. I was aware of how grateful I am for so many teachers. 
so many teachers. All that I've been taught, all that I've been allowed to receive from wise, loving, caring minds and hearts. Hashivat Aveda, returning what's lost. We've all lost a lot recently. But other things are returned. Because we've also lost traffic waiting in the grocery store line that always stops once as soon as I get in it, whatever it is that has kept us distracted and annoyed. Some of that has fallen away as well. We have an opportunity this Rosh Hashanah to pay attention differently in Elul. Let us commit to preparing our hearts, our spirit, our soul, to receive what's been lost and to begin preparing the ground for tshuva. For real repentance for real change, to allow ourselves to forgive and to be forgiven. And let us commit to doing some of the hardest work, preparing ourselves to receive our own forgiveness. forgiving ourselves Rabbi Yael Shai closes her mindfulness reflection on this week's Parsha with the words of one of my very favorite teachers Mary Oliver, of blessed memory. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Like Moshe said to the people, Hayom, this day, this day, we have everything we need to be the people we're meant to be. Rabbi Shai asks us, what do we plan on doing with our one wild and precious life? Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Everybody, thank Shabbat you. Shabbat shalom, everyone.
I don't know about everybody else. Now I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted from this morning. Oh. <laughs>